ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh what's up what's going on mashallah mashallah we're back together again growing together and i know the last few hikams have been like really earth shattering mashallah um allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran uh, after a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim yu'til hikmata man yasha وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Allah SWT says that he gives wisdom to who he wants and whoever has been given wisdom has been given an infinite good. In describing our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah SWT says يُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ that the Prophet's job is to purify the internal and external character and intellects of people, to teach them the book and to teach them wisdom, the application of the book. So knowledge and wisdom are two very different things, subhanAllah. That takes us now to the text we've been reading together here at Swiss. For those of you who haven't enrolled in all of our classes for $10 a month as we build something incredible, inshallah ta'ala, at suhaibweb.com slash s-w-i-s-s. We move now to a really important hikam, the 10th hikam, um, that touches on some very, very powerful concepts that can rock us. So let's kind of frame where we are. The hikam starts by framing actions and deeds. What I attempt known to stuck there, like don't get too caught up in the good you do. Don't get defeated by the evil that you do. In my podcast with Brother Ryan Harris, he told me as an NFL player, one of the things he knew is that what was important for him that people usually don't notice when they watch a game is how people deal with failure. And that tells you if you've defeated your opponent or not. So how do we deal with also failure and slip ups uh, in, in the deeds that we do? And then we talked about emergent religiosity and being too impulsive or too negligent. And then we talked about our emotions and our feelings and our personal kind of um, drives that may not necessarily you know, be the best for us. We talked about anxiety, depression, and sadness. We talked about responsibilities and the signs of putting faith first, if you will. Um, and then we talked after that um, about, you know, the power of dua that's unanswered and then when things don't go our way that we think are, are promised to us and how we appreciate that could be a test from God. The next thing that we want to talk about is health. You know, the Prophet said, نَعْمَةً مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ الصِحَةُ وَالْفَرَاغِ You know, that something that most people fail to take advantage of, one of them is their free time. We know that time is so important. Look at the last part of the Quran, the last 30th part of the Quran, it actually starts backwards. Like when we think about our lives in the dunya, in this temporary world, we think about our birth until where we are today. At least I can say for myself. The 30th part of the Quran starts backwards. It starts with the day of resurrection. It goes from that to our times in the grave. It goes to heaven and hell, our times in the grave, and so on and so forth. Then it goes to al-alaq, when we're created. And then it goes before that, right, before creation. And then at the end of the 30th part of the Quran, wal-asr, it swears by time. As if to say, like, time encapsulates your success and all those things. So sometimes health is a challenge because health keeps us from bad health, from worshiping in the way that we intended. And that may cause us to lose hope and trust in Allah. Or we may see people around us who are sick and we're moved by that, our dear ones, and they're no longer able to worship or serve in the way that they wanted to. We may begin to question trusting in God. Remember the first 25 hikam are about trusting in Allah. So Imam Ibn Ta'ala says, إِذَا فَتَحَ لَكَ وِجْهَةً مِنَ تَعَرُّفِ إِذَا وِنْ Fataha opened like Surah Al-Fatiha, wijhatun, or wijhatan, excuse me, min ta'aruf. When Allah has opened for you a, a, a place where you can get to know Him, a situation, wijha is hard to translate in English. 
which her like a vantage point. But here it means like when Allah SWT has given you the opportunity to know him, فَلَا تُبَارِي مَعَهَا إِنْ قَلَّ عَمَلُكَ don't, like, don't let that bother you if the good you did is suddenly reduced. And what he means here is if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed you to be tested through your wealth, through your health, through some kind of loss, but here specifically health by illness, do not despair if your deeds are not like they used to be when you were, when you were healthy. فَإِنَّهُ مَا فَتَحَهَا لَكْ إِلَّا وَهُوَ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَتَعَرَّفَ إِلَيْكِ He said the only reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed you to experience this is so that you can increase your relationship with Him. أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ Don't you know أَنَّ تَعَرُّفَ هُوَ مُورِدُهُ عَلَيْكِ Aren't you aware like this is, th this opportunity to know Him is His, like His will for you. His will for you could also be mean like a blessing, what, what he wanted to happen for you. Like trust that. What a'malu anta muhdiha ilay and that you you just simply you present these to him as like an offering. Wa ainama tuhdihi ilayhi mimma huwa muriduhu alik. And and like where how do you compare like what you've given to God? in comparison to what God has decreed for you. I'm gonna break this down because I know it's, it's not easy to translate, but it's really beautiful, subhanAllah. إِذَا فَتَحَ لَكَ وِجْهَةً مِنَ تَعْرُّفِ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a window into knowing Him through, in here, like illness or loss. فَلَا تُبَارِي مَعَهَا إِنْ قَلَّ عَمَلُكَ don't, don't get upset if if your deeds like are reduced the only reason that he allowed that, that to happen is so he can make himself manifest to you in your life usually when it's through loss through failure people either are going to get defeated or they're going to realize that this is an opportunity to grow and learn and they're going to see like oh wow i'm not completely capable so what can i do to improve my capability. And if I can't do that, then I am completely in the state of submission to the authority above me. So you see something happening here. Alam ta'alam anna ta'arrufa huwa muridu alayk. Aren't you aware that God's will is for you to know him through this experience? Wal a'malu anta muhdiha ilayhi in that you know, you just, you just give Deeds as the gift, as the offering to God, because He's commanded you to. And how do you compare what you've given Him to what He's willed for you? All right, this is beautiful. And let's go through it. Sheikh Sharnubi says, We know that one of the names of God is Al Fattah, the opener. So, like, when you find yourself constricted, when you find life working against you, ya 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 al fatah iftah li bab al khair. Oh, al fatah, open things for me. Open things for me. Wijhatan a jiha min jihat a ta'aruf. When Allah has given you the opportunity to know Him, wa tilka jiha kal amradi wal balaya wal faqat. فَإِنَّهَا سَبَبٌ لِمَعْرِفَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَلَى بِصِفَاتِهِ كَالْلُطْفِ وَالْقَهْرِ وَغَيْرِهِمَا So in general, and although I mentioned health, it's a little bit wider than that, any type of loss. He mentions Al-Amrad because we want to talk about that because that, that's what impacts most people. But any type of loss. Recently, I was talking to a friend who his uncle was a millionaire and then just like, boom, it was gone. يَعِزُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَذِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Right, Allah يُعْتِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah gives and He takes from who He wants. He raises and He lowers who He wants. So, the point is that these different trials and losses are meant for us to find instability in the losses 
and stability in the Lord of everything. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our relationship with him is what has to be stable. We tend to invert it. So we tend to base our relationship with God strictly on the measurements of the world. This goes back to what I talked about in the last few hikam, where as if I'm obeying Allah and I am with God, everything else is salt on the food, man. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهُ ثُمَّ استقام. ثُمَّ استقام. Well, those who say Allah is our Lord and then they stay down. Staying down is the crux of understanding the logic of the world we live in between the will of God, the command of God, and our choices. So the Shaykh, he says very beautifully, وَتِلْكَ الْجِيهَةُ كَالْأَمْرَادِ وَالْبَلَايَ وَالْفَاقَاتِ You know, and, and the opportunity to know God here is specifically meaning like through illness, through trials and tests, and through loss. فَإِنَّهَا سَبَبٌ لِمَعْرِفَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَلَى بِصِفَاتِهِ كَالْلُطْفِ وَالْقَهْرِ وَغَيْرِهِمَا and because these are opportunities, these are a cause by which we can know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. So like if I'm sick, I turn to him for healing. If I'm needing, uh, you know, to be enriched financially, Allah is a razaq. If I'm looking for any, any name of Allah, the challenge of the names of God and the attributes of God, and we have a class on this in the future called the aims of the names is to be able to find intersectionality between his names and our lives. And that's ma'rifah, the ability to contextualize that. So he's saying this is an opportunity for us to know, for example, Allah's kindness, his authority and power, and other things. And then he says, and the one who's being addressed here is the person who's woke. And you know, I, I gave a mutayaqid, I gave uh, on my podcast, you can find the series on being woke when woke was like that term. And I talked about how Imam al-Harari uh, in his manazil al-Sa'irin, like in Ibn Qayyim in his madaraj al-Sadiqin, which is like an abridgment of it, they mentioned that the first stop in the spiritual path is being awake, right? Al-Mutayaqid, someone who's, and this is not just being awake, this is like deliberately woke, like I'm invested. So it's not the world that's causing me to wake up. No, I am in a state of deliberate uh, alertness. Wal-mutayaqid is the one who's being addressed here as someone that like, they, they, they're alert to God's names and attributes and they see those things in their lives. Not someone that has doubt in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the shaykh, he continues, in this part of this hikam is extremely relevant to us today. One of the things that we struggle with, at least in the West, is the idea of ministry to Muslims. Like we, we're good at being fuqaha, we're good at being scholars of aqidah, we're good at being you know, enforcers of certain things, but we're not very good at chaplaincy. So we see even in the call out culture, right? Muslims are destroyed. For me, that's not the sign of a complete community. A, com a complete community, community is not one that simply holds people to be responsible but a complete prophetic community is one that offer, also offers them redemption. We're not modeling that well for people. So we're seeing people destroyed. Their lives are done. And, and the Muslim community has just cast them out. That's not prophetic, man. That's not a prophetic community. That, that's something else. That's a community that's working for something else. And that worries me. That doesn't mean that we um, minimize the mistakes people have made. We should hold people accountable. <clears throat> but there's accountability with redemption. So this part of the hikam hits on something I feel that is anemic in the Muslim community in America, and that's ministry. So he says, فَلَا تُبَالِي مَعَهَا إِنْ قَلَّ عَمَلُكَ So if you are impacted by sickness, loss, illness, a loss of wealth, existential issues, and we can also say, like, you know, these happen to a lot of people. Then don't don't get down if that happens to you. Listen, listen to the hadith of of the Prophet that speaks to this. Think about people that we know and love who are sick and ill, can no longer worship in the way that they did when they were healthy. Prophet said, "In Allah Taala, يقول للكرام الكاتبين عند مرض عبده المؤمن أكتب ما كان يعمل صحيحا مقيما." Allah Subhanahu Taala says to the malaika, the malaika that are in charge, كرام كاتبين يعلمون ما تفعلون. Mentioned in Surah Al-Fitr, 
you know, write down the, the good that this person who's now sick, write down for them now in their sickness the good that they used to do when they were healthy. It's also an encouragement for those of us who are still somewhat young or younger or really young and healthy to get busy, man. Don't say like, I'm gonna wait till I get older to do things. Now do it now so that it becomes a pattern so when we become older and our physical ability is compromised, our intellectual ability is compromised, su al kibr, the Prophet Saad, res, you know, dua protection from, that that will be like written for us. So people with Alzheimer's, dementia, you know, we see them, we feel upset and sad, but let's remember that the good they did before, they're getting the reward for it now, mashallah. Somebody that's bedridden, we can say to them, you know, the wijha, a ta'aruf, this opportunity to know God, is not something that should get you down because you are being compensated for the good that you did because why? All this falls on the famous hadith in the Malamad al-Biniyat. Actions are by the intentions. Because if that person was healthy, we know they would do it. SubhanAllah. So he says, Inna Allah ta'ala yaqulu lil karam al-katibin inda marad abdihi al-mu'min uktubu li abdi ma kana ya'maru sahihan muqeeman. This hadith is related by Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. The point here, how do we know God through this? He said, this is muriduhu. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted for you. And if you compare that to the actions that you would normally have done, the fact that God is compensating you as though you did these actions perfectly means that the reward is going to be greater while you're sick than the deeds that you and I presented while we were healthy or we had what we needed to perform those deeds because we'll be deficient. So what he's saying, and this is dope, is that this is an opportunity to know Allah because your rewards now are greater and his blessings are greater because it's automatically understood that you did these deeds perfectly. And that wouldn't happen while we were healthy. So like while I'm healthy, if I pray Fajr, my mind might be somewhere, you know, I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, like doing what I normally do, my mind is not focused, right? But if I was somehow incapacitated and I had regularly prayed Fajr, but I was still, you know, alive, but just not able to function like I normally did, I'll be rewarded for that Fajr as though it was perfect. So what he's saying is, like, how do you compare that Blessing in the sense of that illness when that's going, when that's happening, to when you were healthy and there were deficiencies in your deeds. And this is what he means by wujhatun, wujhatun minat aruf. Like this is one component of getting to know the mercy, love, and kindness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So when we're talking with people who are ill, we're talking with people that may have lost things that they're not able because of that loss, they're not able to perform the way that they used to, we should remind them of this, man. That Allah is rewarding you as though you did those things when you were healthy, alhamdulillah, and when you had the ability. And now, because Allah is so kind and merciful and loving to the believers, you are getting the full recompense for the deeds. That's what Sheikh Sharnubi says, وَلَا شَكَّ أَنَّ هَذَا أَعْظَمْ مِنْ كَثْرَةِ الْأَعْمَالِ الَّتِي تُطَالِبُ وُجُودِ السِّرِّ الْإِخْلَاصِ فِيهَا You know, and like this is, this is the opportunity now for, for you to cash in because this is a greater blessing than having to try to fulfill the requirements of worship when you were healthy. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, bless us and help us again one more time. This hikam says, إِذَا فَتَحَ لَكَ وِجْهَةً مِنَ التَّعَرُّفِ فَلَا تُبَالِ إِنْ قَلَّ عَمَلُكَ You know, if the opportunity arises for you to learn about God through loss, through test, this is what's understood. فَلَا تُبَالِ مَعَهَا إِنْ قَلَّ عَمَلُكَ don't, don't get down if you're not able to maintain the good that you used to do. فَإِنَّهُ مَا, فإنه مَا فَتَحَهَا لَكَ إِلَّا وَهُوَ يُرِيدُ وَأَنْ يَتَعَرَّفَ إِلَيْكَ The only reason that this happened is Allah wanted you to have the opportunity to know Him. أَنَمْ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ تَعَرُّفَ هُوَ مُورِدُهُ عَلَيْكَ And that is what God has commanded of us. And this is what God wills for us. Is the opportunity to learn about Him because knowing Allah is what helps center us in life. وَالْأَعْمَالُ أَنْتَ مُهْدِيهَا إِلَيْهِ And 
and, 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 and the deeds that you do, those are simply things that you present because you've been commanded. Like, you know, you've been commanded to do those things. They're a sign of your guidance and, and your gift, if you will, to your creator. How do you compare what you've done to what God has willed for you? SubhanAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and bless you. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.